And question two says uh, we've got block A, which is at rest on a rough or uh, rather horizontal rough surface, right, uh, which is used as an anchor to hold block B. Uh, they say with a mass of 56 kilograms in the air at a certain height above the ground. The two blocks are connected with rope R, which makes an angle of 35 degrees with the vertical. They say block B is suspended from the ceiling with cable C. Refer to the diagram below. Right, now they say to us, um, uh, block A experiences frictional force of 200 newtons. The system is stationary. Now, this is very important, right? So in this case, that means that uh, all the forces must be at equilibrium with one another. So the vector sum of all the forces should be zero. Right, now they say to us, uh, define the term resultant vector. So remember that we know that it is the vector uh, sum, right? Uh, uh, or rather, it is the sum of uh, vectors, right? Or you, we can say that it is a single vector that has uh, the same effect as two or more vectors combined, right? Okay, the first definition, we know that it is the vector sum of two or more vectors, right? Okay, so they said to us, uh, in, they say to us rather in the next one, what is the magnitude of the resultant force acting on block B? Right, so goes without saying, we know that the vector sum of, the, of those forces should be zero newtons. Remember, because it is stationary, we said in this case, it means that the uh, total, uh, um, uh, or rather the vector sum of the forces should be zero. Okay, right. So let's go on to the next one. They say draw a labeled free body diagram indicating all forces acting on block B. Right, so I'm just going to draw it over here. Okay, I will have the force on rope R. Okay, uh, force on R. And I'm going to have gravitational force in this case, or the weight of B. So that's weight over there. As well as in this case, we've got, okay, so I didn't draw that very nicely there. Right, so we've got a force C, the force on rope C. Right, and that is what our vector diagram looks like. Okay, so I hope that you got it, ladies and gents. Right, so uh, those are the three forces that are acting on, uh, on B. And by the way, please remember that the... Um, you know, the, the mark allocation would tell you how many forces you need to have on that diagram, right? So, they said determine the horizontal component of force, of the force in rope R. Right, now note, ladies and gents, what do we note about this block here? We know that it is experiencing friction of 200 newtons isn't it? And we know that that friction, in this case, what is pulling this guy uh, in that direction? It would be the component of that force on the rope R, right? So the force, the, uh, the, the horizontal component on the force on R, in this case, should be equal to that frictional force, which is 200. So I am, uh, because that's one mark, so it means that the horizontal component should be equal to 200 newtons. Right, so let's go to the next one. They say calculate the vertical component of the force in cable C. Okay, ladies and gents, now let's go to this diagram now. So I already know that I've got a horizontal component here, right, uh, of the rope on R being 200 newtons. 
And I know that the, uh, the horizontal component of the force on C, right, should also be the same, isn't it? Because those are the only two forces that are acting horizontally there, right? But they are not looking for the horizontal component. They are looking for the vertical component of that force, right? So in this case, I know I am looking for this guy over here, right? So I'm just simply going to say, right, so I'm looking for the vertical component on C, right? So now if I look at this, that means that if I take the alternating, uh, if I take alternating angles, that should be theta as well, right? But what else do we know as well? We know that the a horizontal component of that force should also be 200 newtons, okay? Right, and in that case, we can actually find out what the vertical component uh, should be. Right, now, please, I want you to note, uh, ladies and gents, we also do not have, in this case, we don't have the angle theta. We we're not given that, um, uh, that, that angle of theta there. Right, now let's start, okay? So we're looking for the vertical component, right? So what I'm going to do is let's start. Firstly, right, I know that the force on B, the weight of the block there, so that weight is mass times gravitational acceleration, right? So this is going to be the weight. So if I look at the forces that are acting, or uh, let me rather say the vertical forces that are acting on B, right? So that would be, it would be the vertical component on rope C. It would be the vertical component, okay, on rope uh, R, but it would also be the weight of that block. Okay, right. So I'm looking for the vertical component of on, on C, right? So let's, uh, let's actually try to calculate it there. Right. Um, okay, I'm a little bit out of space. Okay, let's write at the bottom there. So I'm going to say... The vertical component of C plus the vertical component on R minus the weight, and this is equal to zero, right? The vector sum of all those forces, right, vertically should be equal to zero. So I'm looking for this guy here, right? So that would be the weight on B minus the vertical component on R. Now, ladies and gents, this is going to be uh, the mass of B is 56 times 9.8. Now, let's talk about the, uh, the, the vertical component of R, right? So we're looking for this guy over here, okay? Now, note, what do we notice? We had the angle of 35 degrees and we knew what is the force, the horizontal component of that. We know it is 200 newtons, but I'm looking for the vertical component. So which angle am I going to use? Well, the 10 of 35 would be opposite over adjacent because I'm looking for this guy over here, the vertical component, right? So, uh, notice, so 10 of 35 would be opposite, which is 200, divided by adjacent, which is the vertical component, right? So, for me to look for the vertical component, it means that it will be, so F vertical will be 200 divided by, the 10 of 35. So I want you guys to please note in this case, uh, what am I doing? I'm treating this guy as a 90 degree angle, triangle, 
right? I am looking for, let me uh, just show you there. I knew that this side here was 200 newtons. That's what we said the horizontal component is, right? So now, because I'm looking for the vertical component, right? So we then used the 10, which is opposite over the adjacent side, which is this vertical component. And so as a result, that's how we got to that. Okay, so that means this angle here, F vertical, or rather the side, would be 200 divided by the 10 of 35. Okay, and let's find out what that is. So that's 56 times 9.8 minus 200 over the 10 of 35. All right, ladies and gents, and what I get there is 263.17 Newtons. I hope that makes sense, guys, right? That is how I get the vertical component of that angle there. Right, now let's go on to the very last question. They say calculate the angle theta between the cable and the ceiling. Now, what I'm going to do, uh, ladies and gents, let's do this. Let me go to rope C. Okay, and there is a sketch of rope C as well as the components on rope C. We already have found out that this guy is equal to the horizontal component on the rope R, so which means that's 200 over there. We found out that the vertical component was 263, 263.17. So now what do we note? Which means this angle here, notice, that I've drawn the line here parallel to that one over there, right? So which means we've got alternating angles. So that means that is theta. So what do we have? We've got the opposite side. We've got the adjacent side. So which means to get 2.6, all I'm going to say is 10 of theta will be opposite, right? The opposite, it's the vertical component. That's 263.17 divided by the horizontal component, which is 200. And so theta will be equal to the arc 10 of 263.17.17 divided by 200. Okay, and let's find that angle there. Uh, actually, let me just say shift 10 of 263, 263.17 divided by 200. And I get an angle of 52.77. Okay, and that would be our angle theta. Right, so please keep in mind, ladies and gents, that because we had a system that is in equilibrium, that is essentially how we, were, we are going to calculate that. That would be out of 13 marks. And so that is how we come to the conclusion of question two. Let's go on to the next one.